Hello Internet, welcome back to our tutorial series. This is our first game after 0.E's release. If you haven't checked out, I made a quick video just announcing it. We haven't really talked about anything specific, but that uh, video honestly has gotten a lot of traction, which is weird. I think we had 150 views or so in the first like six hours. By comparison, this video, when it goes up in the first 24 to 48 hours, we're going to get like 50 views tops. So that's um, pretty significant. And it was a nine minute video and it got over eight hours of watch time already. So that's nice. Um, why am I out here? There was a reason I stopped here because I didn't want to head back to base and risk forgetting what I wanted to do. But when I loaded up the game, my goal was to swap engines. So it looks like we're not in a position to do that. Why am I out here? What What is here that I would have wanted to press towards? Well, the military surplus is a given. Doctor's office is pretty great. Uh, maybe the fast food restaurant. Why is this blinking? Is this where I am? Okay, looks like they added an at symbol. I don't remember there being an at symbol um, at my position. And then here's our friendly NPC. They always had blinking uh, at symbols, but why was I over here? Pet supply. We, we already hit the pet supply and pizza parlor. We'll mark, mark those as explored. Why? What, what was I going to do? I remember saying I was going to go over here and check what's over here. I know we didn't do that. We'll do that when we head home for the night, if I remember. Probably the military surplus is where I wanted to go. Tough zombie. Oh, that's very loud. Crickets. Let me turn my sound down. I guess the military surplus. Didn't we see a feral predator over here as well? There's a runner. It's a leaper. A hunter, excuse me. I mixed them up. The predator in the old tile set looked like the predator. Quite a bit of zombie density here. It is still very bright, so they may see us. At least that one is going to see us as we slip by here but we'll just truck through it looks mostly clear here there's not a ton of monster density so I think we'll head over to the military surplus shop I how's our weapon doing perfectly fine we have an inventory full of canned food we have the sig for emergencies let's kill this guy kill both of these actually if we can I really don't want a bunch of enemies tracking me while I'm trying to maneuver. Please don't grab me, bro. We'll wait for this zombie. Yeah, I was uh, going to just record one or two quick episodes and swap out that engine. Now that I'm in the game, it looks like we're exploring. I, It's, it's a, so annoying because I want this to be a tutorial game. And I want to be able to talk about different mechanics, but there's so much in Cataclysm where... Oh, good God. What are you all doing out here? There's a shady zombie. Haven't seen one of them in a while. We'll talk about them briefly. Um, my goodness, what are you all What are you all doing out here? It's quite a big horde. Um, so I know I complained when we saw the baseball diamond with a horde this size or bigger... In the street, it doesn't bother me as much because it makes sense to me that zombies would migrate kind of passively through streets in hordes because that's basically what you see in every zombie movie. It does really suck because I don't think there's a back door on the uh, military surplus. We're obviously not going to hang out and clear them out. This shady is going to be a problem. So we haven't talked about shady zombies. We're going to try to talk about every time we see a monster evolution, we're going to talk about it and just give you a rundown of what it is. Because again, tutorial content and learning the enemies was something that when I first started playing was like a, it, I found really fun to learn because we have quite a lot of monster diversity in this game. So it was really fun to me as a new player to kind of learn everything and learn the ins and outs of each creature. So uh, we'll, we'll talk about this. So the shady zombies are kind of inverted zombies. So most zombies see three or four tiles in the darkness and then pretty like 25 or 30 tiles or more in the daylight. Shady zombies are the flip of that. So at night, this guy has really excellent vision. You'll see he can spot us despite being very far away. But in the daylight, their vision is hampered. Now, additionally, if they step into the shadows, they will disappear from view and become invisible. 
So um, because it's so bright out, we can actually see this shady zombie. But if we were playing um, during the day and it stepped into the shadows, with our light blindness and with him being in the shadows, we would not be able to see him, even if we were standing like pretty close to him. So that's their two main things. Um, I Someone told me that they evolve into an upgraded version of themselves. I actually looked uh, very recently, they do not upgrade at all. Um, so shady zombies will always be shady zombies. There are higher tier shady type creatures. So for instance, there is a, I believe it's called the zombie night stalker, something like that, that also is invisible in darkness, but that is not actually an upgraded form of the shady zombie. Shady zombies in their monster entry don't have an upgrade line, so they will never upgrade into anything, unfortunately. There's also a soldier zombie. Um, soldier zombies are kind of like child zombies in that they are a specific... It, 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 they run the gambit of different types of evolutions, but they're all themed together. So, like, there are boomers in the game. There's also a child version of the boomer. There's a, a screamer in the game, a, sh a shrieker in the game. There's a child version of the shrieker. Soldier zombies are kind of like that. There's a soldier zombie, which is the standard. And then, like, for instance, the shady zombie, there is a black ops zombie, which has some of the same th features that the shady zombie does. They're not actually connected evolution-wise, but they are functionally very similar, except the, the Black Ops zombie is much more dangerous than a Shady. The Shady is on par with uh, a pretty standard zombie. They're not really that scary. They don't do a ton of damage or anything. Their main thing that made them really popular and really kind of a, a fan favorite or fan hater is that... Um, they used to spawn in large groups, so a lot of times you would be doing night raiding in the early game, and you would come around a corner, you wouldn't see anything, uh, and then you'd go into a building or whatever, and all of a sudden all the windows would break out because a horde of seven or eight shady zombies had spotted you from like way across the street, way out of your vision range, and then stalked over to murder you. So that's kind of why they got so much traction. A lot of people miss them. I hear people all the time say, hey, were they removed from the game? Um, and the answer is no, just with the monster evolution changes, they now spawn, they're an evolution. They don't spawn on day one as much, uh, or really at all. Um, so, and when they do spawn, they don't spawn in hordes anymore. They spawn as singular entities like this guy over here. It's honestly very, it, it really neutered them. I would rather see them spawn in larger groups because I think that that is, uh, kind of more conducive because this guy by himself is no match for us whatsoever so i would like to see them spawn in groups again but the reality is a lot of new players struggled with them so i kind of get why so what we're going to do we're going to back up and wrap along the building this will um draw this one out uh and probably this one is definitely going to see us and then that shady will come around a corner as well hopefully as they come this horde will not follow them and we want to try not to make noise too close to the horde I think there may be an alarm on the military surplus, so we really don't want to lead them into there um, and risk them setting off an alarm and alerting that entire horde there would be very bad for us. So let's just chill. Here comes the shady zombie. You'll see we'll put him down very easily. He, again, is on par with the standard zombie. He's not really exceptional in any way other than his ability to disappear from sight, which we didn't even see because, again, it's considered to be bright outside. So... Really not not much of note there. Uh, here we have a gas station. Yeah, no. Oh, there is a rear door on the military surplus. That's very good. Gas stations, we discussed previously about how they will have fuel. You can see they are slightly colored differently. These are diesel pumps. These are gas pumps. Uh, it looks like there were actually an increase to the number of diesel pumps. In my area, when we go to the gas station, there's something like... I think 16 regular pumps and four diesel pumps. Previously in the game, it would often be um, like eight gasoline pumps and one diesel pump, which is not really very realistic. So I kind of like that they added a few more pumps to this. There are three diesel pumps here. So finding diesel, if you can find a gas station in general, is, is a great idea to fill up whatever vehicle you're driving if you're able. So let's talk about how gas pumps work. We have cash cards in our inventory. If we approach the pump and hit the E key for examine, lowercase e, we select the pump, it will ask us, do we want to use the pump? We'll say yes. 
and it will prompt us on what to do with the gasoline. Now this will cost us money. So if we look at our cash cards, 9060, we have $9,060. We'll go ahead and fill up I dropped the gallon jug somewhere. Okay, let's see if we can find a container to fill this up. Um, preferably a big container. There might be something in the gas station we can use, but possibly not. If we could find a little janitorial area, there may be a gallon jug. No, doesn't look like it. Maybe check the shelf back here. Yeah, we don't have a big bottle. Um, oh, here's a jug. Okay. Yeah, rotten milk, no thank you. I'm not a big fan of rotten milk. So we'll unload the rotten milk, pour onto ground, and we'll fill this jug up with gasoline. Uh, we have 9060. And again, we don't need a hose for this because this is just a, a standard gas pump. So you would select the pump you want, say yes, and then pour into a container. Um, you can also directly fill your vehicle if your vehicle is nearby but we don't have that. So we'll go ahead and refill our gallon jug. You'll see it says there's some left over. That means the pump still has fuel in it. And if we go to our inventory, oh, why did that not cost me any money? Why, uh, I have the exact same amount of money. It used to require cash. Why, why don't these, uh, okay. Uh, so never mind. I guess they don't charge you anymore. That's weird. I don't I don't know why that is. That definitely used to require cash cards. That could be a bug. That could be a, a change to the intended mechanic. That's weird though. Uh, but anyway, you can see that they uh, have a lot of fuel in them. 25,686 portions and you'll see a gallon is only 3,000. If we switch here and look at the other pump, you'll see each pump has its own independent fuel. Um, 48,317. 21,865. Okay, yeah, so each pump has its own individual reservoir. Obviously in real life, I believe they pull from one large reservoir underneath the, underneath the parking lot or whatever, or maybe there are a couple different reservoirs, but each pump has an independent amount of gasoline in it. So even if we completely filled our tank, which there's plenty of gas here to completely fill multiple tanks, um, even if we did that, we would still have uh, like say we exhaust this pump there's still going to be fuel in the next pump so you don't need to worry about that other thing about gas stations that's noteworthy is the uh, vending machines if we head in here check the vending machines we've talked about this before i tend to take the perishable beverages um, and fruit juices and especially tea tea is a very important one to take because tea has um positive health bonus which we talked about in our health episode in the food ones, I tend to take meat products because they usually have a decent shelf life. The um, pork sticks and beef jerky and I don't know if there are bacon in these or not, but basically I take the meat products. Sometimes I'll take the nuts, but not really, not often. We'll grab some nuts, I guess. Got to grab the nuts. Um, and uh, yeah, that's about it though. Looks like there are some books here. I don't think we have outdoor adventures. Um, if you're looking at books, the easiest way to identify if you have a book or not is to look at the coloration of the name of the book. Uh, we talked about this before that a red book will be listed as something you've never read before. A blue book is something you have read and can teach you something. Yellow means there's recipes, but you can't gain skills from it. And then gray means there's no recipes or anything um, that would benefit you. Now the problem is when you highlight an object, which is what occurs when you try to pick it up, it does not display the color. It just changes the text to a white on blue background. However, if you look down here, this name will be color coded the way you, you normally would be. So Discobolus, which I assume is how you say that we is blue so it means we have this book we've read it already so we know what's inside of it um, and, and we uh, can gain a skill from it now I'll pick it up but I don't need it really so again red color-coded uh, means you've never read them but you can see this one is listed as just for fun that means there's no recipes or anything in it I don't want that uh, we will take the US weekly us weekly I guess Modern Rifleman, we already have, but we'll take uh, anyway. We already picked that up. We have Computer World. 
I don't love. Sometimes I pick up books I don't need, but there's also an ATM here. I believe we've talked about this already. We're going to transfer all money onto one card. That way we can drop all these uh, extra cards later on. Can't believe uh, gas doesn't cost you money anymore. I don't know why that is. Uh, okay. Uh, and then, of course, there's snack foods. But it's like junk food because it's a gas station. So the main haul on a gas station, of course, is the gasoline. So let's see if we can pop in the rear door here. Man, I really need a proper crowbar. We should have made a proper crowbar. Door isn't locked. Well, great. We can see enemies out the front here. Well, I'm a little concerned they're going to come breaking in. Here we go. So we're in a military surplus store. It's uh, one of the more recent additions. You can see that there's a ton of items here. The uh, game has gradually been getting increased loot over the last several months uh, because at some point they're going to start simulating looting. So what that means is that they're going to up the spawns. So there's tons of items everywhere. And then over the course of the game, as the game progresses further and further, there will be fewer and fewer items to simulate NPCs and other people coming and, and looting the area for supplies. So currently, we're early in the game and they haven't implemented that yet. So there is a ton of loot in most places. These MREs alone are enough to feed us for several weeks. Um, an MRE, uh, they were nerfed recently. I believe their average calorie count is something like 1,500 calories, which is um, not quite what you would need in a full day, I think. I don't really remember what the optimal number of calories are. I don't really care because I don't believe in min-maxing. Elbow and knee pads. Uh, man, we're talking about a lot of important stuff this episode. So elbow and knee pads are some of the best armor in the game. Um, not because they're truly exceptional, because they're really not. You'll see they only cover about 30% of the body part that they're worn on. They have decent protection values, better than leather. And um, they're not amazing. The thing that makes them so good and so valuable is that they have zero encumbrance. And what this means is that even if, like, let's say here we have the arm. It's our arms, right? It's an arm guard. Uh, it goes on the strapped layer. But because it has zero encumbrance, even if we were wearing something else on our arms on that same layer and we would get an encumbrance penalty, the protection that we get versus the small encumbrance penalty still makes these worth wearing. So even if we were wearing steel arm guards, which would be much better than this item and be on the same layer, we could still wear the elbow pads and deal with the extra two or three or whatever encumbrance penalty because they are so low encumbrance to begin with. So I highly recommend any time that you find knee or elbow pads, you put them on. I would not double up on them. I see people sometimes who are wearing two... Um, elbow pads and two sets of knee pads I would not recommend that um, just because role play reasons it doesn't really make a lot of sense and seems real silly but um, yeah and I'm hoping that changes at some point currently in the game you can only wear two of something you can't wear three of the same clothing item which is fine I think that that's a, a fine but somewhat arbitrary rule but I'm also wishing they would add some stuff kind of like helmets so that you can't actually wear two of certain items so like helmets um, are based on your head encumbrance and once you have a certain head encumbrance you can't wear any more headgear. So like even though we have an army helmet we can't actually wear two army helmets because they would conflict with each other. It would be too much encumbrance. So I would like to see that extended to certain other items. Like I mean it's you can't do it the way it's set up currently but I would like to see a flag that says hey you can't wear two elbow pads. It just doesn't make sense. However, this is some arm and uh, leg protection. We really needed arm protection because we don't have anything currently on our arms. The elbow pads have a very low coverage. They only cover 30%, so their likelihood of protecting our arms is pretty low. But if they do get hit, they have a high protection value. So pretty good armor, pretty good pickup. This is what I was talking about at the beginning of the episode where I said that I don't love the Let's Play aspect of the tutorial stuff because we talk about so much and it's such scattershot like this episode we've talked about several different important things like using gas pumps and el elbow and knee pads and monster evolutions and like what do I call this episode you know like do I I'm probably just gonna call it general gameplay zombies are coming in um, but that's not really fair because 
you know, if people are searching for a specific topic, you know, they're going to look at the title and see general gameplay, and they're going to be like, oh, I don't need to watch this. So that's a bummer. <laughs> I would like to uh, focus a lot more. We are overweight at this point. What are we wearing on our head, by the way? Army helmet. No hat, though. How's our head temperature? Torso is very encumbered because we are carrying so much stuff. Head uh, to temperature, minus 13. We'll take the boonie hat just for a little extra if we want to wear that. We should really head back to base and dump this stuff. Take a helmet liner. Probably should pick up the backup elbow pads. We're getting very encumbered now. Okay, some military books. Okay, a lot of military books. Uh, I feel like we should go back to base and then come back here later. Yeah, let's stop. Let's just get out of here. For two reasons. One, uh, we're overburdened and we really don't want to end up in a situation where we could get into trouble. Um, but two, because we, they're coming in there and we really don't want to deal with that. Problem is, we're not going to have a great time coming back because it will likely be daylight before we head back out. We're currently tired. Oh, I'm not paying attention. Pay attention when you move through the darkness in a populated area. Ladies and gentlemen, be careful. How, um, can we head to the bottom sidewalk? Looks a little bit more clear. There's a dump. I really don't want to deal with this predator. And I don't want to head straight south because we've never really cleared this area. Yeah, we have. A little bit, we have. Predator looks like he heard us, but didn't come to investigate. So we'll just head down this way. There's a bus. You spotted me from really far away, my friend. There's an iBot. And a huge horde again. Uh, this is the gun shop. So likely uh, when the alarms went off, they all started to come over here. Let's, uh, we're seeing a lot of enemies here that we should probably talk about. What time is it? 22 minutes. <sighs> okay, uh, so we talked about the soldier zombie. Higher armor, lots of military gear. Uh, high priority if you're looking for a uh, 5.56 rifle, they will a lot of times have M4s on them, and they will often have entrenching tools and MREs, uh, grenades, things like that. Child zombies, hard to hit. Uh, here we have a Howling Waif. It is similar to it. It is a child zombie, um, but it's slightly different. I believe this is one that screams, uh, and that will draw enemies nearby. If it shrieks, it will draw enemies to it by, by the sound. Uh, boomers. Uh, I think we've talked about uh, we've talked about these already they will spit on yeah we definitely talked about this um, fatties headless zombies we talked about the iBot let's talk about the iBot so anytime you trigger something in the game that has an alarm it has a chance of spawning an iBot so this most likely came because of the alarms at the gun shop not only did we set off the alarm when we were trying to pick the door, but the uh, zombies have subsequently smashed the glass out of the front of the building, which will trigger additional alarms. They have a chance to spawn an iBot. Now, an iBot is... I mean, you've seen them in sci-fi games before. These were in... I mean, geez, what's his name? In Portal is basically an iBot. Uh, what was that guy's name? I want to say Wheatley, but I don't think that's right. Uh, it's been so long since I played Portal 2. Uh, but also Half-Life, I think, is the one that they're probably based on. It's just a, uh, they're in Fallout, just a floating eye robot. Basically what it does, it will take a picture of you. Um, and if it does that, I believe it will have a chance to spawn a riot control bot. So the iBot by itself is not dangerous. This will never attack you. This will never um, fight the zombies for you or anything like that. The zombies will attack it if they see it. So um, if it's nearby or whatever, they will murder it. But um, their main feature is that if they spot you, they will take a picture of you or whatever, and it will spawn a riot control bot. Now, riot control bots, and I'm just looking around to verify that there's none here, um are interesting creatures they release gas to try and pacify you um, because they're a non-lethal control uh, robot so like a non-lethal riot control robot let's just run from this guy and try to get away from him we'll be careful back here because this is where an alarm was set off fat zombie hello hello everyone I'm just gonna go about my business 
quite a lot of zombies here. I really don't want the feral runner coming over here. So this was a mistake. We should have gone back the way we had originally traveled because we know it was mostly clear. So what I'm going to do is head to the north here. Try not to pick up any additional... Y'all are really on my butt here. Uh, try not to pick up any additional stragglers. And then once we're over here, I think we'll start killing them. Just because I don't want them to track me all the way back to base. Okay, we need to run. He grabbed us. The right control bot will release uh, pacifying gas, which will release, release, reduce your stats. I don't believe it will ever knock you unconscious, but I'm not 100% on that. And obviously being knocked unconscious in the zombie apocalypse is a very bad thing. So you really need to be wary of that um, in case that would happen. Other than that, riot control bots are really not that big of a deal. Let's, um, I have two following me. If we walk, will we regain any stamina? Not really fast enough. So I'll tell you what, we'll walk up here, put the, build, the vehicle between us and them, and just rest for a little bit to get our stamina back. We don't really care about this vehicle, so it doesn't matter if they, uh, smash it up any not really getting as much stamina back as I would like can't attack the child zombie okay I hate child zombies we'll miss a lot uh, which is again kinda of frustrating I don't understand the logic behind it but it is what it is okay don't bump the wrong button there dummy there we go really hate that they're hard to hit we've talked about that now let's just head up here. He's not going to be able to break through there, so let's just rest for a minute. Try to get our stamina back. It's very slow stamina recovery. I'm not sure why it's so slow. That's okay. Uh, we have our stamina back. We are slowed as well, which is something that's become an issue uh, as we were traveling. That's why they were able to keep up with us so much. Let's pop this open and deal with the Zambi here. Okay. Get our stamina fully back so that's why that was uh, a little bit tricky was that they were able to chase us pretty effectively hello zombies i didn't see you there so what we're gonna do we're gonna head over what is this clothing store we're gonna head over here get eyes on what it, this building is and then we're gonna head back to base for the night so let's quickly head over there you'll see there's a little farm plot here um where we can harvest things which we really should do because I want to make an episode on farming, which we should have planted by now, probably. Hello, wolf. Please don't bother me. Wolves are an excellent source of meat. Um, so if you're out hunting, wolves are a good target because they will attack you. Anything in Cataclysm that will attack you is a great thing to hunt. Um, because it's easy to kill them. If you fight something, say a rabbit, um, that's going to run away from you at every opportunity. You kind of have to corner them in order to kill them. Or have a gun on you. Um, but they also are small, so there's not a lot of meat on them. So wolves are a good target. They're a decent-sized creature um, that will attack you, so you don't have to worry about them running away. Oh, you're not a lab? A radio tower? That's really disappointing. I was really hoping you were a lab. Okay. Let's try using auto move. We've never used auto move. We talked about how it works, but we've never really used it. You know, I could just... What is this? A motel? We've cleared that area. Let's just auto walk over here and see what we can do. I'd rather you auto walk closer to the forest. You're overburdened. Are you sure you want to travel? It may be painful. No. Let's never mind. Oh, it's saying that because if our stamina depleted while walking, it could deal damage to us. Um, if we continue to press. Oh, spiders. So we found a webbed up area. Uh, webs will indicate spiders are here. We really don't want to <laughs> deal with spiders. They're very hard to hit and can be very quick. Um, so for an unarmored character, they can really tear you up pretty bad. So uh, we have some armor. I'm not super worried about it, but we might end up with some broken arms. So I'd rather circumvent that as much as possible. And we'll just uh, skirt through here and head back to base zombie dog. Stay away from me, zombie dog. I'm really not in the mood to fight. We could, if we were uh, seeing a lot of enemies, move through the forest because it would block line of sight, but that's not super relevant at the moment because there really aren't that many enemies. Um, we haven't really talked about evasion strategies like that, but 
I also don't know that it's super necessary. Man, we're so far from our, our base. Let's get back on the main road here. We'll try auto walking. I, I don't think it will like kill us or anything. It, it Surely it will prompt us if we get winded and almost die or something. Man, that's choppy. Whatever. You'll see how quickly that brought us back to base. Saved us a lot of key presses. Saved us a lot of time. Let's go ahead and dump our stuff on the, the pile here. I had someone ask me today, why don't you ever sort out your piles? It's like, well, <laughs> I don't think about it. Drop all this. No, don't drop this. We want to keep our tools on us. We'll drop everything else. Did I keep the gasoline on us? Yeah. I don't want to drop that and it end up just being in the base, never taking advantage of it. Sort our loot. Great. Um, we can talk about MREs sometime. We'll crack open an MRE and look at the insides. For now, I think we should just get ready for bed. We're not that injured, but we could do with some bandaging. So do we have bandages? Just the one. We'll make some bold makeshift bandages really quick. Makeshift bandage. Six. I don't know how much water we have, but we'll be okay. Store an inventory. Ah, boiled. Makeshift bandage. Oh, we only have enough for one. That's okay. Dispose. Store an inventory. We'll apply these really quickly. Apply head, apply arm, apply arm. That's enough for now. Let's eat something so we're not going to bed hungry. Eat an orange, my friend. That'll do. A little bit of lettuce. We're probably at normal. We're at overweight, so it's okay to not eat quite as much. Oh, sorry, raccoon. I did not mean... No, come back. We don't want to let him out. No, don't go up the stairs. If he goes up the stairs, we'll kill him for the meat uh, because we don't want... Yeah, go in the bathroom. I'll close you in there. That's fine. Because we don't want to lose the meat. The point of keeping him down here is that he's meat on demand, which we've talked about. Yeah, I feel bad when we cover so much in one episode because it's like I can't make the title of the episode. We need to put on our headgear here. Wear head... Uh, because I feel bad that people aren't going to be able to search for things. Because most people aren't going to watch every episode. You know, this, uh... Th you know, Cataclysm in general does well on the channel. But, like, most people don't watch this. I get, you know, 30 or 40 views per episode on a good episode. On a bad episode, it's like 15. Uh, and not a lot of watch time. And I think that people, when they come for tutorial stuff, they go to Google, you know, Google or YouTube and they're like, okay... How do I change, how to change a tire, Cataclysm, Dark Days, that, and it pops up, you know, a, probably a Vorm video or something. And when it's like, not a specific topic, I don't really know. But the whole point was to do a Let's Play, because I don't really do tutorial content. I didn't think I'd be good at it. So I thought, you know, I thought instead of making all these two or three minute videos where we're like, this is a shady zombie, this is what a shady zombie does, and then that be the whole video... I thought, well, let's play the game and just talk about stuff as we go. Hopefully you're enjoying it. I mean, people seem to like it. I've gotten a lot of comments on this series and people saying that it's a good series. But, I don't know, there's always that, that second guessing in the back of your head. You know, you always wonder, like, am I doing a good thing? Am I, am I doing well? And then, you know, with YouTube, you have the numbers in front of you. And sometimes it's like, oh, this really did not do well. And I don't understand why it didn't do well. Uh, you know, and you try to assess. You say, okay, well, what was good about it? What was bad about it? And how do I improve on it? But that's a little harder, you know, easier said than done. So it's 10 a.m. In the next episode, we will be able to, uh, I think, finish off putting that engine in the vehicle. And we have a little bit of gasoline we can throw in there. But again, gas is so plentiful that it's really not a concern. So for now, that's going to do it. That's a wrap on this episode. We'll be back with more tutorial content in the near future. And I will see you next time.